What if there was one drive to rule them all? Okay, that was stupid. Hey everybody, it's Chris from Family Geekery, and today we're going to be making a bootable USB drive that contains installers for macOS. Now in the past I've showed you how to create a bootable USB and install macOS onto a computer using just that USB drive that you created, but in this case we're going to make one drive that has four different versions of macOS on it. So over the years I've had several of these USB drives that I create to install if I need to install macOS on a couple different computers then instead of downloading it each time or instead of doing the recovery and downloading it off the internet to each individual computer I'll make a, a bootable drive of the current version and I'll go ahead and, and do that um, use it over and over again but I'm not very organized so I end up with all these drives I don't label any of them I have to plug them all in and find out which ones which and sometimes you've got a computer that wants the newest version. If you've got a new enough uh, MacBook, then you want the newest version of macOS. Or sometimes, like you see on this channel, I've got these 2010, 2011, 2012s that won't run the most current one, but it still needs to have a version. So I'm going to make a drive that has four different versions, and it's the versions that I use the most for installing macOS. So in order to do this, you really only need a USB thumb drive. I'm going to use a 64 gig drive and uh, the size is going to depend on how many different versions of macOS you want on there. So 64 is going to be fine for the 4 and other than that all you need is ideally some high-speed internet because we're going to be downloading all these installers. So let's get started. So the first thing we have to do is actually download all the installers that we want to uh, create bootable disks out of. And if you've ever gone to the, the App Store trying to find these installers, you know that they're hidden. They are, the, the App Store usually only shows you the most current version that you can download and install, but there is links still to the App Store that have these apps. So I've got a web page here that I created, and this is at the Family Geekery website. And the URL, which I'll link down below also, is familygeekery.com slash driveofpower. And once you get there, it's going to have some instructions here, but most importantly, it's got these download links. So it says you want to use Safari, so you want to open up this link in Safari, and you want to make sure that your app store is closed. So what's, what's going to happen is you're going to pick one of these. Let's say I want to create a disk for High Sierra, and when you click the link, it's going to open up a web page first, and then it should go ahead and launch that app store for you. And here is Mac OS High Sierra. So you can't find this if you just try to search for it. You have to have this direct link to get to it. Once you get to it, you're going to click Get. And it's going to open up your settings software where it normally does your updates. And it's going to say, hey, are you sure you want this old crap? And you say, yes, I do. You hit download. And it's going to start downloading. Now each of these is anywhere between 8 and about 13 gigabytes, so it's going to take a while to download. So make sure you have enough time to uh, download and also make sure you have enough space. If you get all four, like I'm going to do, then it's going to be around probably 50 gigs or so, so make sure you have enough free hard drive space before you start downloading all these. Alright, so once your download is done, it's going to try to open that download, and depending on what version of computer you're on, it may not be able to open it. So in this case, it's saying this copy of install macOS is too old for this particular version of macOS. So that's okay. It doesn't matter. You just hit quit out of that. If your computer is able to open it, then it may open up the screen that says, hey, do you want to install this now? If that happens, there's not really a, an exit button on there. So you just want to go up to the uh, link that's right up here that says uh, install Mac OS and click on that and then click on the, the quit just like you would quit just any, any other kind of program. So once you got all these downloaded that you want, we can close out the Mac store, we can close out the settings, 
and we can close out the tab that opened up for your installer link and go back to here. But the next step we need to do is get your thumb drive ready to, uh, to mount the installers on. So let's do that next. So obviously whatever drive that you use, it's going to format it. It's going to kill everything off of it. So make sure you don't have anything on there that you need to keep. So take your, your thumb drive, plug it into your computer. I'm going to use my trusty little tiny 11, 11 inch MacBook Air here. And we're not worried about Time Machine, but we are going to open up the disk utility. So you can either find that by going up to Spotlight and start typing in disk utility, or you can find it down in your applications slash utilities. Once we get in here, you obviously don't want to accidentally do anything to your internal drive. So we just want to mess with the USB drive. So I always start here by clicking on the view and showing all device. That way you see all your disks and all your volumes. So here's my external disk, the SanDisk Ultramedia. And this USB, this is just a volume. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to format this disk because it may be in a different format than what we want. It may have been on a Windows machine before. It may be straight out of the package. So you're not sure what it's formatted for. So we're just going to go ahead and format it. So select the drive, not the volume. And we're going to click on Erase. Now at this point, it doesn't matter what you give this name. You just call it Mac OS or call it anything you want. Because once you start installing things, it's going to give it its own name. We're going to select Mac OS Extended Journaled. And then the GUID partition map is going to be fine. And all of this information here is also conveniently located right here on the web page. So once you got that ready, you hit Erase. Making sure that this is the correct drive, SanDisk Ultramedia. Click Erase. And it'll take a couple seconds to erase that drive and partition it with that new volume. And there it is, all done. So now we still have the same drive, the SanDisk drive, and here's our new volume that I labeled Mac OS. And now this is just one single volume. So this is just one single partition on here that we can install. If we just wanted to install one version of macOS installer, we could. Let me close out this time machine again. But we want to install multiple ones. So we're going to need multiple partitions. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go up to partition, making sure that we've selected the volume now. And we're going to partition this volume into four pieces. And Mac makes it super easy by just hitting this plus sign here. Now I've got two, now I've got three, and there's four. And it automatically resizes them to equal partitions. And if you want to adjust any one of them, then you can either grab these circles here and drag the pie pieces bigger or smaller, or you can click on the individual partitions and adjust the size right here. Now once you've done this, don't hit apply yet, because we're going to actually go ahead and label these. So here's our original one, Mac OS, but like I said, we're going to rename that anyways. But to be able to rename it when we install the media, we want to make sure we know which partition we're installing which installer to. So I'm assuming that I've already downloaded all four of these installers. And now I'm just going to name these partitions. So let's just name this first one here, maybe Monterey. And again, don't hit apply. We're just going to go to the next one. And let's name this Big Sur. Let's name the third one High Sierra. And the last one, let's name that one Catalina. And it doesn't really matter what order you do these in, but just make sure that you label them all. And once you get all four of them labeled, now you can hit the apply. And it's going to say, hey, we're going to change up your partitions here. We're going to create new partitions and rename them. 
and you say go ahead. This is going to take a couple seconds to go through all four of those, and then I'll be right back. All right, that took a couple minutes to do all four, but it wasn't that bad, so we can go ahead and click done on that. And now when we look over here, you can see our SanDisk Ultra Media has our four partitions, all individually named. Now I'm not sure if it matters if you have uh, space in between Big Sur. I think you can escape it out in the next step, but it's a lot easier if you just make it one word. So for all the two word ones, I just kind of mash them together and it works just fine for me. All right, so now we got our drive all set up. Last step is to create the, uh, the bootable media out of it. So for that, we're going to follow these directions here. We're going to open up Terminal. I'm just going to use Spotlight to find it. And once we have the terminal open, we're going to come back to this page here, and we're going to find whichever version of installer that you want. So I'm going to pick High Sierra in this case, and you're going to copy this entire command here. And we're going to paste that into the terminal, but we have to make sure that we change this last part right here, and this is in the instructions on the web page. So we're going to change this little placeholder to the name of the volume that we just created with the disk uh, utility. So in this case, I'm installing the Mac, Hi Mac OS High Sierra, so I named that partition High Sierra, all one word. And then once you got that, paste it in, change the name of your volume, then you hit enter. It's going to ask for your password, so type that in. And it's going to say, ready to start. Gives you one last chance to make sure that you don't accidentally delete something you don't want to. So it says, do you wish to continue? Hit yes, and then return. And it's going to start going. So first it's going to go through the steps of erasing your disk. Then it's going to copy it on there, and this could take anywhere between 15 to 30 minutes or so, depending on the speed of your computer, the speed of your drive, all these different factors. So let, let's just go ahead and let that go, and I'll be back when it's done. All right, so while this is copying over, if it pops up and asks you uh, if Terminal can access your drive, then obviously let it say yes, so click yes on that. So I've copied all the files over, it's completed. So if I open up Finder now and look back here where my four uh, partitions were, you can see that it changed this one to install macOS High Sierra instead of just the High Sierra that I had named it before. And there is the installer on there. So you would do this for all four or however many of these you wanted to. Obviously you download all the files that you want first, go through and do these commands for each one, remembering to change the name of the volume and make sure that it matches whatever partition you're gonna to go to and what installer that you're gonna use. And once you get that all done, then you'll have all four of your partitions will be renamed and you'll have the installers on all four and it'll be done. So I've gone ahead and done this already with this drive here. And yes, this is the same drive that a couple days ago I told you guys uh, stop using USB thumb drives, but that was for a, a different topic altogether. In this case, when you're making an installer, a boot, boot disk installer, it, sometimes you have problems with any kind of external hard drives or NVMe drives. So for this type of purpose, I always, always use just a regular old thumb drive. Now in this case, I did use a 64 gig. I partitioned it up just the same way as I did with the example that I just did here. And I've got all four already downloaded and installed on here. And I use this drive because this is a dual drive. It's got a USB-C end, and then it's got a USB-A end. So if I'm working on an old laptop, I can use this. If I'm working on one of the newer ones, the 2016 and newer that has just the USB-C ports, then I can use the USB-C side. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to shut down this computer. I'm going to plug in my drive that I've created, and I'm going to show you how to get to the installers. All right, so I've got the computer completely shut down. 
I've got my drive plugged in here and to bring up your choice of installers all you got to do is hit the option key once it's booting up so option the easy way to remember that is it's giving you the option of what drive to boot to so I'm going to press that power button quickly hold down the option key until I hear the chime And here we go. Here's the original hard drive that's built in. And here are the four different installers, all ready to go. So click on the one that you want, and it's going to launch that installer and get you going. So from there, it's basically going to step you through the same type of installation that you've seen before. I've got a video that, that shows how to go all the way through and, and choose all the, the right choices. It, but for the most part, it's just click, 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 click create an account name, and you're done. So hopefully that was helpful for you. This is a, a nifty little drive now that I'm going to label up. I promise I'll label it. It won't be in, in the drawer full of 100 thumb drives that I've got. And now anytime I need to install any one of these versions, then I'll be able to do so pretty easily. So that's going to wrap it up for this video. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. If you like this type of content and want to find out more, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And thank you as always for watching. Until next time, peace out and geek out.